In this video, we're going to go over lazy loading for single spa micro front ends. Lazy loading is a strategy for improving the performance of your application by only downloading the code that you need up front and downloading other code later as you navigate around in the application. In single spa, there are actually two different places where you can do lazy loading in your code, and also there are two different methods for doing lazy loading. The two places in your code where you can do lazy loading are either in your root config, like we're looking at here, or within the individual applications themselves. The two different methods for doing lazy loading are either with system.js, your module loader, or with webpack slash rollup, your bundler. Okay, so let's talk about the places in which you can do lazy loading. Here in the root config, you do lazy loading with your loading function. The loading function is the second argument to the register application uh, API. And you provide a function that returns a promise. In this case, we're using system.import with system.js lazy loading. The code for React MF planets will not be downloaded until system.import is called. And system.import won't be called until the activity function, which is here on line 19, indicates that the planet's uh, micro front end should be active. If we look at the actual UI here, notice that we're currently looking at the people. When I click on the planets link up here, we're going to see a network request to download that code. Here it is. So that's what lazy loading is. And this is doing a route-based lazy loading within the root config. Route-based because um, we went to a different URL and so now we have to download new code. This is something that's built into single spa with these loading functions. Okay, so now let's talk about lazy loading within your application. So I'm going to switch now from being inside of the root config repo to being in a different repo. This is now the code for people. This is the people application. So lazy loading within your application is always a bit more framework specific. In this case, we're looking at a React application, but similar concepts apply for Vue and for Angular. Specifically, the Webpack stuff um, that the Webpack rollup stuff applies regardless of whether you're using React or Vue or Angular. So the way that you do um, code splitting with Webpack and rollup is you call import as a function. In this case, our goal is to take this homeworld component, we're going to comment it out, and instead we're going to lazy load it. Once we lazy load it, it will then be rendered here on line 43. Okay, so to do this in React, we're going to use the react.lazy function and provide it our um, dynamic import here that will download the homeworld component. When I save this, file, we'll notice that in the output, the webpack output, it will say that there will actually be a whole new JavaScript file created. The React MF people currently contains the homeworld component. It will be taken out of the React MF people file, and it will be put into its own file. So let me save it. Here we are. So notice that there are now two different JavaScript files, whereas before there was only one. So this is how you do application-based lazy loading. Let's uh, verify that it works. So when I go back to the people application, I'll refresh the page here. When I click on any one of these people, 
we'll notice that we're now downloading the zero.reactmfpeople.js file. That's the file that has the homeworld component. And we can see here that homeworld Tatooine is actually showing, so it is working. You can configure the name of these files in both Webpack and Rollup. You can do it in the Webpack config, or you can do it right here inside of your code with a special comment. Um, I think I'll have to restart the Webpack dev server in order for the name to change. There it is. So you can, you can control the name of these files. Okay, so we've now shown both how to do lazy loading in the root config and within the application. And we've talked about how to do it with system.js and with Webpack. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind is that you can mix and match those however you'd like. So you can do Webpack lazy loading, which is just the dynamic import. It's not system import, it's just import. This is Webpack lazy loading, and you can do this inside of the root config or inside of the applications. Similarly, you can do system.import inside of the root config or inside of the applications. The pattern that I often follow is that I'll do um, system.import between the applications and within the root config, but I'll do just normal dynamic import within Webpack for um, code splitting within an application. However, you can choose whichever one you'd like. The idea here is that you want to only download the code that you um, need to uh, for like the immediate present. You don't need to download any code that is not needed right now. To end, I just want to give a word of caution. So code splitting and lazy loading like this can actually be a detriment to your performance if you take it too far. So 100 network requests is not better than 5, or even 2, or even 1 sometimes. So you need to actually measure the performance of your application if you're going to get serious about um, making it better. One pattern that I like to follow is to do route-based code splitting, but I don't usually do code splitting much beyond that. This is why using the code splitting in the single spot root config, where we're calling register application, it's really nice and convenient just to do a little code split right here, because this is always a route-based code split. And the nice thing about route-based code splits is that um, you know when they're going to be downloaded the user has to navigate around. They have to click on a link. They have to go somewhere within the application in order to see it. And so I'd recommend sticking to route-based code splitting either just with the register application calls or, or even within the application itself, do route-based code splitting. Stick to that at first and then add in other code splits if needed later on.